Okay guys, in this particular example, we're going to be talking about the law of cosines. So up until this point, we have been talking about the law of sines. However, we are limited in our ability when dealing with triangles such as side, 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 and side, angle, side, because we cannot solve these types of triangles using the law of sines. However, we can solve them using the law of cosines. So that is exactly what we're going to do here. Now, for this particular example, we're only going to do one of these triangles, and we'll do a second video on the other. So, in this video, we're going to be dealing with side, 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 and we'll make another video dealing with side, angle, side. Okay, but again, for this video, we're dealing with side, side, side. Now, you can see to the right here, we have three equations that we're going to use for our law of cosines. And just going over it real quick, the lowercase letters, so in this case A, B, and C, those are talking about your sides, or your uppercase, right? That's talking about your angular value, okay? So if we have a triangle that is side, 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 with no angles, we can go ahead and use the law of cosines to find the missing values, okay? Now, one thing you need to remember, when using the law of cosines, you always want to try to find the largest angle first. That way, the other two angles are acute. And we do this because once we find that largest angle, we can go ahead and use the law of sines. However, if you were not to find the largest angle, it's difficult to use the law of sines because technically, if you're using sine, there's a possibility that you could have two answers. Like, so for example, if you have something greater than 90, right, you could have sine of 135 degrees. Or you could also have sine of 45 degrees. Those are both going to give you the same answer. So you want to pick the biggest angle first, so that way your remaining two angles are acute, and you can go ahead and use the law of sines on them. Okay, again, you'll run into difficulty if you don't do it this way, and you try to rely on the law of sines. Now, that being said, you could technically just go through this whole problem and just solve the whole thing for each of your angles using the law of cosines and you don't have to worry about picking the biggest angle first. Okay, But if you're going to find one angle and then use the law of sines to find the remaining angles, you need to pick the biggest angle first using the law of cosines. That way you get the right answer at the end. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through this. So again, we know that the largest side, right, opposite to that, that's going to be your biggest angle, right? So I have three, five, and seven, okay? So my biggest angle here is going to be angle B. So that's what I'm going to use to solve using the law of cosines, angle B. I'm picking the largest angle. Again, this is angle B and this is side B, okay? So let's go ahead and plug this in. So we are going to solve for angle B. Let's use this guy right here. Right, so we know that side B is going to be seven. So we have seven squared equal to, we know that A, side A is going to be five. So five squared. Then we have plus side C, which is gonna be three squared. Then we have minus, and we have two times A and then times C, so we're gonna have three here. Okay, and we're gonna have cosine of B. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So we get 49 equal to, so we're gonna get 25 plus nine. And let's just go ahead and do this out here. So we get two times five, that's gonna give us 10, times three, that gives us 30. So 30 cosine B, right? So let's just continue to clean this up and combine our like terms here. So right here and here, I can combine these. So I get 49 equal to, this will give us 34. And we're gonna get minus 30 cosine of B. Let's subtract 34 on both sides. So we get 49 minus 34, and we're gonna get 15. So we get 15 equal to negative 30 cosine of B. And now our last step, we want to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 30. 
Okay? So essentially this is what we have now. We have cosine of b equal to, and we're going to have negative 15 all over 30, right? So in order to isolate angle b, we need to take inverse cosine. So doing that, we get angle b is equal to inverse cosine, and we get negative 15 all over 30. So let's go ahead and plug this guy into our calculator, and that will give us the angular value for b. So plugging that in, we get inverse cosine of negative 15 over 30, and we get 120. So 120 degrees. So angle B is now equal to 120 degrees. Now, since I picked the largest angle, I can solve the rest of this problem using the law of sines. However, if you did not pick the largest angle, let's say you picked angle A here, okay, to solve for it first, you would have to continue on this problem using the law of cosines, okay? But again, um, we picked the largest angle first, so we're able to go ahead and now use the law of sines. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the law of sines to finish up this problem. So we're just erasing this. All right. And let's just use this guy right here. We'll say sine of A, so we're trying to find angle A, over the opposite, which is 5, equal to... So we know angle B is 120, so we'll have sine of 120, again, over the opposite, which is 7. Okay, so we should be comfortable solving these types of problems. Again, you can go ahead and cross multiply if you want. All right, there's a bunch of different ways you can go ahead and isolate A. I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator real quick. So we have sine of 120 divided by 7, and then times 5. So essentially what we have here right now is sine A is equal to point, and we're going to round, 0.61, and we'll say 86. Okay, so our last step to get angle A, we take inverse sine. So angle A equals inverse sine, right, of 0.6186. Again, let's just go ahead and plug that into our calculator. So again, inverse sine of 0.6186. And we get 38.21. So angle A is equal to 38.21 degrees. Okay. Now at this point, this is pretty simple. All we have to do is start at 180 and subtract our two known angles. And that will give us what is left over, in this case, angle C. Okay, so just plugging this into our calculator, we're going to do 180 minus 120, minus 38.21, and we get 21.79 degrees. 21.79 degrees, okay? So here are your angles, okay? So again, that is how you use the law of cosines for a triangle that is side, side, side. Again, the takeaway here, just remember to always pick the largest angle first. That way you can solve the rest of the problem using the law of sines. Okay, and that is it.